Since I escaped Scientology in 2005, um, both my husband and I have um, gone to great efforts to help people start new lives. So when the Aftermath Foundation was formed, we jumped at the opportunity to continue our efforts to help people start new lives. It's incredibly important um, to me personally as someone who was born into Scientology and honestly never imagined I would be able to have the life I always had dreamed of. Um, being able to start over was incredibly meaningful to me personally. And so to afford that opportunity to others is absolutely something I am deeply committed to. Leah Remini, Scientology in the Aftermath, was really, really powerful. This is, uh, this is from my perspective as someone who had participated in a number of different earlier documentaries. What, to me, what set that series apart was the fact of the matter is you don't have, with Scientology, you just tell the story, real people's stories. That's what matters. And that show had such an, a huge impact in terms of public awareness of the abuses of Scientology. Um, so that's what, and that outpouring of public support is what spurred the creation of the Aftermath Foundation. My husband and I agreed immediately. I mean, we had been doing the work of helping people start their lives over since we got out. Um, we were always trepidatious about having a, an organization that would become a very, uh, definite target for Scientology Fair Game, OSA, etc. We knew that, but also it was a way to um, create organized support. So we were in from the get-go. Scientology knows that if a member of the C organization knows that there is a number that they can call to start a new life, they are going to lose members of the C organization. And those, you know, if somebody wants to stay, that's okay, that's on them, but they should have that choice. They should be making that choice. We'll certainly provide resources. Read this book, watch this, listen to this, uh, find out for yourself in Scientology's words, right? <laughs> Actually, what's true for you is what's true for you in the real world, unlike in Scientology. Um, but getting the person on that path to where they're asking questions, they want to find out, they want to understand what happened? How did they get into this high control organization in the first place and find the path out of that? That's, that's what I would say. We, we would, we look to support someone in, in that journey. Scientology says on their website, members of the C organization are free to leave at any time. That's an outright lie. A member of the C organization has no access to internet no access to a device, a phone of any kind that has, um, even, even if a member of the C organization has an organization phone that has, that device contains filters. So they cannot access, um, anything that Scientology doesn't approve them to access. It's extreme information control. Um, they cannot call a family member. They cannot call a friend. Um, any phone calls a member of the C organization makes to family or friends have to be approved and has to have somebody listening on the phone with them. If a member of the C organization wants to visit their family, they have to have special approval. They will be interrogated first to, to make sure that they have no plans to try to escape. Again, extreme control. Um, every minute of every day of a Sea Org member's life is controlled. They are monitored constantly from the moment they wake up until the moment they go to sleep and during the time that they're asleep. So they have to be at a set place, at a set location, at a set time throughout the course of the day. And if they're not, they're made to comply and, and do and do the schedule. So schedule, information control, communication control, um, denying access to the outside world. That really bullet points the extreme controlled environment that is the life of a C organization member on a day-to-day -day basis. Particularly for me, why I use the word escape is because I had to literally escape. And, um, and I think that no matter where somebody is in Scientology, the reason the, the word escape is used is because 
Um, Scientology calls it an unauthorized departure, which indicates that they're going to take excessive action to stop you from departing. And that's, a, you know, that, that term un unauthorized departure obviously comes from Hubbard. But the fact of the matter is any human being should be free to do what they want to do at any given time. Um, so escape is what, what you're actually doing. Um, when you have to run away and you know you're going to be pursued and you successfully uh, avoid capture, that's escape. <laughs> there are many, many people in the SEA organization that if you told them, hey, you know what, you can start a new life, come with me now, they would go with you.